of the FIA Formula One Azerbaijan Grand Prix. We've got two groups of three coming your way. And first group, closest to me, we have Joe Guan Yu. Then we have the, what I call, almost rookies. We've got Franco Colopinto and uh, Oli Behrman. Now, welcome to you all. Uh, Oli, why don't we start with you? Welcome back to Formula One and a full race weekend for you this time. Um, what are your expectations coming into this one? Yeah, it's nice to be back, first of all. Um, of course, not the circumstances I, I would have hoped, um, but nonetheless, it's a great opportunity to build up my, my experience, uh, get a full weekend under my belt, like you said, with some notice this time. I, I've been known it was coming, uh, which, which is helpful. And yeah, I just want to use it to really build up step by step and enjoy it as well. How, how much difference does the notice period make? Because, of course, you were parachuted in on Saturday morning in Saudi Arabia at Ferrari. You've had a couple of weeks now to build up to this. What, what have you been doing in that time? Um, yeah, of course, knowing that I'm going to race is, is a big uh, help. Uh, also, the fact that I'm going to do FP1 and FP2, that's going to help me a lot just to build it up. And, you know, another street track, I'll have time to build it up, not have to take any risk. And uh, yeah, of course, I've been training hard, but I've been doing that anyway because I'm racing next year. Um, yeah, just uh, continuing the training process and, and making sure I'm as ready as possible. And tell us about Baku. You have a tremendous record here, having won both Formula 2 races here last year. Um, it's a tricky track, but one that you go very well at. Are you excited to be making your first full Grand Prix appearance at this racetrack? Yeah, like you said, last year went pretty well. Um, and yeah, I was excited to come here in F2. And of course, to, to make the step to F1 for this weekend is a, is a great experience. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I got a lot of confidence at this track last year. From the outside, it was a very clean weekend. On the inside, I hit the wall um, every single session. So I'm going to be trying to turn that down a little bit. Um, and yeah, just have a clean weekend and enjoy it as well. Is, is that the goal? Just have a clean weekend and enjoy it? And, and what will be, will be? Yeah, exactly. I just want to build up step by step because uh, we have time to do that in f2 you have to be straight on the pace take a lot of risk with just one session we have three of them this weekend um so i just want to maximize myself and and you know gain experience it's going to be the most sessions i've done in f1 in a in a single time you know I, i've never done an fp2 session before i've done all the others but not fp2 so um yeah it'll just be a case of building it up um and enjoyment is is coming anyway so yeah well, look, best of luck to you. Thank you, Oli. Franco, if we could come to you now. Before we talk about Baku, can we throw it back a couple of weeks to Monza? How do you reflect on that first Grand Prix weekend? Um, it, was, it was very special. Uh, it's amazing to see here so many people. In F2, there were so little, and now it's full. <laughs> <laughs> um, but now very happy to be here. It's a, it was a very special moment in my career. Of course, you you always work for that for that goal and, and that dream since you are very little and, and to have achieved it in Monza. Uh, it's very late notice. I was in the sim for F2 preparing the race uh, of Monza with with the MP team and suddenly I got a goal that I had to go to to England and I did the best prep I could, but was was very little. Um, unfortunately, I didn't have a lot of experience in the Formula One car, so I had to learn quite a lot of things uh, very quick. Um, I had a lot of information coming in uh, from, from all the team members and they were super helpful. They were really, really helpful and it helped me to, to you know, process everything a little, a little bit quicker, to do that lear learning process quicker. And uh, I think part of the, the good performance that I had in Monza was uh, due to my engineers, due to the mechanics, uh, due to the warm welcome that, that everyone has been giving me in the team. Alex has been very, very helpful as well. Uh, very supportive and uh, yeah, yeah, I'm just very happy to be in this team. Honestly, um, it's it's an amazing family. It's of course not the best circumstances. I'm uh, I know Logan was very close to to all the team members and it's very sad. But of course, you you never choose when you get to Formula One and uh, it was very special for me. Uh, something I was not waiting for. I was still training a lot and and I was uh, since the beginning of the year trying to get ready in case of Formula One. Uh, race was coming in and I think I I did the job in Monza of course uh, super grateful with the opportunity Williams gave me the, the chance the trust that, that James uh, put you know to, to put a young driver again in the in the seat in Williams that is something that represents the team represents um, uh, Williams to put the young drivers and give them a, an opportunity and it was it was amazing to see and amazing to be there after so many years uh, without an Argentine driver 
in the grid to be me, the one joining the, the Formula One, the Formula One grid was uh, just an amazing feeling and very special there in Monza. You did a great job. What was the biggest thing you learned at Monza? Um, I did learn so, so much stuff. But to be honest, we were going into the race with a lot of question marks. I, I haven't done more than eight laps in a row in a Formula One car, car before that. And then suddenly they put me into the 53. And, and it was very tough. And there were many circumstances that I was not sure what I had to do. And I was learning during the race. Uh, and we went step by step. I think that was the most important part to be building on during the race weekend. Uh, we did a good job up until quali. I did, I did a, let, a little mistake and I, I missed the, the chance to go into Q2, but it was still a, a very special weekend. Like, the race was, as I said before, a lot of a lot of question marks and, and we did the job. Uh, just bounced back very strong after a tough quali and I, I showed with the team, you know, uh, that, that gave me a trust to put me there and they are doing a lot of effort these last few races um, that, that you know, I could I could do a job. The team is, of course, working forward and, and hoping to to be scoring more points soon. So it's it's great to see that that I might help and help them on that in the future. Now you've never been to Baku, never raced here. Uh, what is the approach? What are the goals for this weekend? Um, the goal is to build up slowly. I think it's very similar to Monza. Monza, I didn't know the car. Now I don't know the track. So it's still one thing to learn only. Um, uh, as Oli said before, three three FPs it's more than enough. I think for us to to learn the track. I don't. Know, I haven't been in many street tracks, but I hope to to have done enough prep in the simulator and to uh, have worked really hard with the team to to done enough to to be on the pace quick. Um, uh, the reality is that I don't know the next seven races, and we know that it's going to be tough, and uh, it was part of a risk, and it's going to be a great experience as well to know these last seven races of the year that. Uh, I haven't been racing in, and F2 doesn't race as well in the next six. So uh, I know it's it's going to be tough, but I'm doing a lot of work and a lot of prep to to be ready for it. Um, of course, I think we have a really good car to be able to score points, uh, and I'm going to try to do the best I can. I think go step by step, session by session, and then see where we end up. All right. Well, best of luck to you. Uh, Joe, can we just start by... Uh Giving some advice. Neither of these two has been here in a Formula One car before. Any advice for them? Honestly, I think just enjoy the weekend because I think, especially I think for Oli, who already done a whole weekend, he know how this feeling. And for Franco, I think he will just enjoy all the races that like I did in my first season. I mean, you know, like the certain style obviously is different, but uh, I think every driver, especially in F2, really wanted to take that chance and he has the perfect platform for them to shine and have a nice future. So, yeah, I just wish them all the best, but not go too fast, though. Stay behind. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, why don't we talk about the, the performance uh, of Sauber? Um, the team said there were a lot of learnings over the Monza weekend. Uh, what were they? Where are you at in terms of performance at the moment? You know, every weekend we are like, obviously we're having a similar uh, package for uh, a few races in a row now, but uh, like every weekend we're trying to extract as much as we could. Like together with me and my teammate, we try to have a different setup to understand what is the needed for the current situation to making a bigger step even for the next coming races or is for the future development. So it's a tough situation at the moment just because I think uh, we don't really have the pace fighting yet to anywhere close to top 10. And so uh, we keep the, let's say, motivation high and uh, we want to learn as much as we could in every certain sand and to understanding, therefore, with high down force track, low down force track, and then see how it goes also here in back in Singapore, because I think the last two races to the coming two will be completely different circumstances. But uh, yeah, it's a difficult one just to give a very high expectation, but uh, we are trying to work in each individual areas that's uh, current weakness and trying to solve that and hopefully that can give us a let's say better better coming up races and in terms of performance we can be fighting more close up well what what about this weekend i mean it's it's a unique track layout here isn't it you've got the 2.2 kilometer um straight and then it's a street track the rest of the way will that make things better for you or I not. think it makes more hope for sure for the race. I think the the race will never end into you know the last last laps. And uh, for us in the past, I think this not being a one of the track we've been especially struggling a lot with. And uh, we're just hoping with uh, what we have this year so far that uh, can give us a uh, a better overall performance. And uh, in terms of you know using as much as we could with the benefits of 
the current car and uh, yeah the rest we need to go let's say step by step from fp1 and see how it goes and uh, i think the most important is a lot of certain stands or track we go to when the car you put that on ground is is working w well and then you have a really good weekend so we just need a few more this back like the beginning of the season and then we should be in a much better position all right well look best of luck to you as well now let's turn to the broadcasters who's got our first question please harry Hi, Harry Benjamin, Sky Sports F1. A uh, question to Ollie. Um, I just want to focus on um, the notice period you mentioned there. Obviously, you've had a couple of weeks in comparison to being parachuted into Saudi. But was it only a couple of weeks? Did you have a little bit longer? Because Kevin's been on 11 points for a fair while. A ban was highly likely before the end of the year. I'm just wondering if the team or I said anything to you longer than a couple of weeks ago, just to start getting ready before the end of the season, just in case. Well, I mean, my preparations have been kind of looking towards next year, um, you know, since the announcement that I'll be racing with the team next year. And it has been a while that Kevin's been, you know, close to a race ban. Um, so I knew it was a potential, you know, possibility to, to jump in the car at any point. Um, and yeah, if I could have chosen, it would be one that doesn't clash with F2. But, uh, you know, t you don't choose when to jump in F1 and, and every opportunity is one that you take. Um, but yeah, I've been really preparing for next year and, and part of that means that I'm ready also now. Um, so it's a, another great um, opportunity to show uh, how I've improved and, and what I can do. Thank you, Oli. Yeah. All right, next one. Yeah, uh, Rodriguez uh, from the Sun Spain. Question to Colapinto, to Franco. Congrats for the, for the race. Uh, I would like to know, uh, in terms of driving, uh, you have a very good teammate, Alex Albon. Uh, where is the point where you have to improve on driving style to get closer to him? Hola, Roldan. ¿Qué tal? ¿Todo bien? Um, yeah, yeah it's, it's tricky, you know. It's a very big step from, from F2 to F1. And luckily, I've been working a lot in the simulator. I've been helping the team to, to improve the car as well uh, in the deal. So that's been very helpful already. Uh, I think it prepared me well for, for the races. Um, I have a lot of things to work on, I think. Of course, going into the race, we didn't have any information almost about uh, my data, about what I was doing wrong. Uh, so now we have a lot more things to work on. And we used very well, I think, these two weeks to understand better what do I need to do better. It's a kind of similar track, I think. Very low speed, long straights, low downforce. So um, I think it's going on the same direction. Uh, I had to fix a few things that uh, I really worked on the sim. It has a lot of power. It's Sometimes it's a bit difficult to manage the power, the, the slip on exits, the slip on entries. Uh, tires are, are very sensitive to it and just need to manage that a little bit better. Um, Alex is very smooth. He has got a lot of experience in, in Formula One and I am, I think, using that very well to, to understand in what areas I need to improve. Um, I think that the tires are the most difficult part to, to understand and just working on that to, to, to nail every session, but it's uh, always, always difficult. Uh, yeah, really working on that too to be better in the next few rounds. Thank you, Franco. All right, Diego. Uh, Diego Mejia, Fox Sports Mexico. Question to Franco. Uh, so Franco, congrats on the debut as well. Um, seems like your popularity has suddenly exploded in, in Argentina and uh, part of Latin America. You've been enjoying it on social media as uh, we've seen on the, over the past few days. How are, you, how are you embracing that and how, what has surprised you about the change from two weeks ago when you were still a Formula 2 driver? Well, no, I. I always enjoy to, to interact with the people. Luckily, the Argentinian fans are amazing. And, you know, they, in one, in one way, they help me a little bit to get to, get to where I am now. So it's always nice to, to interact with them. Not many drivers do. And uh, it's always, always nice, you know, to have a little bit of time. I already did, did before, but now it just went a bit more crazy. I'm already deleting all the social media, so that's that's gone probably, and, <laughs> and my community manager will have to deal a little bit more with it. But um, just fully focus on the weekend, and of course, it's it's amazing to have so much support from your country. You know, um, you never, as I said before, you never choose when you get to Formula One, and it's just a moment that I'm luckily enjoying a lot, and uh, yeah, just trying to make the most out of it. Have you been surprised by by the reception back home? Um, no, I. I knew it was going to be like this, you know. It's been 23 years since an Argentinian driver got to Formula One the last time. And there was so much need of the country. They love sports. And there was so much need from Argentina to have a Formula One driver on the grid. They are very, very big motorsport fans. And to be honest, I would have loved when, loved when I was very little to have 
someone in Formula One to be able to support, to be able to wake up in the mornings and watch the races. And I didn't have that. And of course, it's a pleasure that it's me now, the one that is here, um, and that so many young kids are, you know, starting in go-kart because they are seeing now the races and because motorsport is getting a little bit more and more famous and to, and to more people in their houses. And, you know, unfortunately, I didn't have that person to, to be cheering for, but it's amazing that I can see so many people now happy, enjoying as, as I am doing here in Formula One, but also uh, from their houses cheering and supporting so much. Thanks, Franco. All right, next one. Albert, uh, Albert Fabri, ESPN Latam. Uh, question for Franco. Uh, was there any special advice, any special message that you received before you start the race from other drivers or from other personnel from the Formula One that at the end of the race you say, wow, uh, he, he was right on that? Um, yeah, I did. Actually, the first message I received was from Lando uh, as soon as it got announced. Uh, he just won the race before and, and he sent me a message. So he was very nice, very polite. Um, and, you know, I've been speaking in the driver's parade later with the, with the guys, with Charles, Lando, Alex, and, and he, they have been giving me some, some tips and some things to be aware of. Uh, some things I've been struggling that, that they have helped, but uh, it, it is very difficult, you know, until you don't drive the car. It's like they told me before driving the Formula One car, it's, it's very tough on the, on the brakes. It's, it's impressive how much acceleration it has, then the power, how quick it's in the entry of the corners. And you can imagine it, but until you don't drive it, you don't really realize, you don't get the feeling of, of how it is. And, and it's amazing. It's the same on the races, you know, you have to do it to understand some things. And even if they tell you, it's like, yeah, yeah, I, I get it, but until I don't do it, it's, it's difficult to feel it. Um, and, and there have been a lot of drivers, you know, they are very, very nice and helpful. Uh, I think it's a, a great community in F1 and, and, you know, it's the best drivers in the, in the world. So it's uh, just very nice to be here. Thank you, Franco. Any more from the broadcasters? If we've got no more from Albert, yeah. Uh, that's another one for uh, Franco, but as well for Oli and Joe. Uh, jumping from the Formula 2 to a Formula 1, uh, do you think that the car is, is, uh, is teaching you, is preparing you uh, on the right way uh, because of using the same tires and, and the, the type of car, the characteristics of the car, is preparing you perfectly to jump on a, on a Formula 1 or there is always uh, a gap that you can never expect? Do you want to start? <laughs> he can start. He's, he's current driving F2, like, All right. more closer to now. Oli, go on. Thanks, guys. Um, yeah, no, I mean, it's, uh, it's the closest category to F1, but uh, I think nothing can really prepare you for F1. Um, just, you know, the amount of investment and time that goes into producing an F1 car, and it's developed throughout the year. Um, and optimized really by, by so many people, um, it's really a different bull game than driving the F2. So, you know, despite the F2 being the closest as possible to, to F1, um, it's still a very big step once you get to the F1. In um, terms of performance, what is the biggest step? For me, it's the um, just the downforce level of F1. It allows you to do so much more. Um, the way you drive the car is, is a bit different. I would relate it a bit more to F3. F3 is very similar driving style to F1. Um, and yeah, you can just play with the limit a bit more in F1. Um, and yeah, like I say, it's optimized. So it's really, I mean, when the car is on point, it's it's really perfect. And it's more of a confidence thing, whether you extract the lap time or not. Whereas, yeah, it's, it's a bit less. Once you really know the car in F2, it's more you know, you drive to what, what is possible from the car rather than yourself. Um, yeah, I think, you know, it's a championship that is the closest to Formula One, but nothing can really compare to this. Um, suddenly, when I got the first test from working with two or three engineers, suddenly I opened a room and, and there were 30 of them. <laughs> and uh, you had one that is checking the win, one that is checking the clutch, uh, one for each little thing. And it's just like, it's a completely different different level, you know, of, of investment, of technology, and it's something that you need to get used to. Um, and I think that's why, that's what, you know, academies like Williams uh, or, or some others maybe, but especially Williams, I think they are doing so well to prepare us as the drivers. They are investing a lot of time uh, on preparing, preparing us. I think it showed it when, when I jumped in the car that I hadn't got, got any mileage. I only did a half day in Abu Dhabi and I did one FP1 in Silverstone, and that was it. That was my Formula One running. 
uh, one hour of track in, in Silverstone and a little bit in Abu Dhabi. And, and, you know, I was on the pace almost straight away. Uh, and I think that shows that the team is doing a good job with the young drivers to, to be able to prepare them. Uh, Formula 2 car, it's a very nice car to drive, but it's, it's still uh, a bit far off F1, I think. Um, in F1, everything is maximized. Everything is the best it can be. And you drive the car and you have no issues. In F2, you go to the engineer, you can complain about every part of the corner if you want. Um, but that's why they, they have so much work to do. Uh, but in F1, it's like everything is close to, per to perfection. And, and they are following, following that. They have a lot of tools to be able to uh, maximize the car that you have. And it's just an amazing car to drive. Uh, it's the fastest in the world, and it's uh, something you, you never experienced before. Joe, you, you drove the old F2 car. How did you find the step? Yeah, actually, I don't know how the new car, by the sound of it, looks a bit different. But uh, yeah, on the old one, actually, it wasn't a massive like difference in terms of the low speed. But uh, of course, the biggest feedback we had was the power steering wheel when it came, and also like the high speed downforce, because suddenly you are approaching a high speed with much higher minimum speed, and with the lightness on the wheel, that it gives doesn't really give you the confidence to be pushing the car around uh, for the first time when you tried it. But uh, yeah, I think the whole back in the factory, how as a team, a group of people working F2 communicate compared to Formula 1 is a completely different world because obviously everything you are communicating with two of the engineers only in F2 and they're helping with everything, starts, car balance setups, and there's so limited certain things you can do. But uh, here, you know, you can change every single part on the car and try to make the benefit of it. So I think it is a big step, but uh, it is a good one to be, of course, get yourself as much prepared as possible to, to be ready for F1 chance. In Baku, and as you can see, we're joined by Fernando Alonso, Pierre Gasly, and Daniel Ricciardo. Now, Fernando, can we start with you? Because the news this week has been a lot about Aston Martin and the arrival next year of Adrian Newey. Uh, you've had a few days to look at all the press cuttings, just... What is your view of what's happening at Aston Martin at the minute? How crucial is Adrian Newey to the team? Well, it has been a, yeah, a positive week for sure for the team with the, with the announcement. And, um, and yeah, he's a great addition to the team. Um, and probably, uh, for me, what I think is that, you know, the Aston Martin team is the team of the future in, in a way. You know, we are just opening um, new buildings uh, at the factory, the campus. Now building two is finished. Wind tunnel will be January. Um, Honda, Aramco, uh, best partner in the world probably, and, uh, and now Adrian as well. So yeah, I think the team is taking shape and Lawrence's vision is taking shape. So yeah, good news this week. Almost every team on the grid wanted Adrian. How involved did you get in luring him to Aston Martin? Um, what a question for him. I, I text him for sure. And uh, like everybody did probably that, you know, I wanted to work with him. And uh, yeah, I saw him also at the Monaco historic Grand Prix um, that he was racing that week as well. And we spent, you know, half an hour chatting as well. And I don't know. I mean, uh, we all tried to persuade him and uh, I think uh, ultimately I think Lawrence and as I said his vision the new factory and, and what Aston Martin wants for the future together with Honda as well were probably key factors listening to what Adrian said yesterday. Now he starts in March next year and, and the focus is 2026. Do you think he can have an influence on 25 as well? I don't think so. I would like to say yes, but um, honestly, I, I don't think so. Um, March 25, I think the focus for most of the teams will be 26 project and change of regulations. Um, if you start in March until you know everybody and you know you take place in the factories April or May, and I don't think that is really worth spending too much in the 25 campaign unless you are fighting for the championship, which. I hope we have a nice surprise, but I, I, I doubt it. So um, I think the 26 project should be um, the first car that he has uh, an influence. Right, look, final one for me, Fernando. Let's just bring it on to this weekend. Uh, Baku was a good race for the team last year. What are your hopes coming into this one? Uh, let's see. I think every every race, it seems a little bit different. And uh, at the midfield, everything is 
so tight that you know one or two tens can make a huge difference and uh, hopefully back is one of those positive weekends for us um, last year it was a sprint uh, event so we only had fp1 and it was a little bit um, difficult for everybody hopefully now with the free practices we can uh, fine-tune the car and, and let's see all right best of luck to you thank you for now uh, daniel can we come to you next both you and pierre have worked with adrian newey if we could just start on that topic um what does he bring to a team? What advice can you give Fernando? What what is what can Fernando expect? <laughs> uh, I I don't think I could give much advice to the most experienced uh, guy on the grid. Um, but uh, look, obviously, I I enjoyed you know I've, I've spoken it before. I enjoyed a, a lot of my time with him, and it was just even a yeah like a privilege to you know when I joined uh, Rebel Racing in in 2014. Uh, yeah, just to drive one of his cars, work alongside him. And um, I mean, yeah, it's it's not, obviously his his level of expertise in, in his field. And, you know, I, I will normally just feedback things. It's not that I can stand toe to toe with him and, and speak his language, if you know what I mean. Um, but it was uh, just to try and obviously collaborate in those years and, and Give, give what I could and then let him obviously work his magic. Uh, that was just a cool, very, very cool experience, you know, walking past the office, seeing the drawings and everything. It's, uh, it's yeah, I mean, it's not for show. He's he's there with pen on paper and, and yeah, just uh, very, I'd say very unique, but very special way of working. And uh, yeah, from that, it was just obviously a pleasure and a privilege. And obviously I don't need to give Fernando any advice, but I'm sure it'll be an enjoyable experience. All right, thank you. And and what about this weekend? You've got the new floor on the car. What are you expecting? Yeah, so I'm I'm looking forward to that. It's um, I'm all, I mean looking forward to driving here again. You know, I didn't I didn't do this one last year, so it's another circuit that I'm yeah just keen for. It's a race as well that can throw anything up in the mix. So it's you know one where I think especially us you know maybe in that midfield battle, it's it's one where we can hold on to maybe some optimism that you can get a maybe a bit of a special result um, on, on a circuit like this and as, as the race plays out as it normally does. So yeah, look, first and foremost, the updates, yeah, try and get those going tomorrow, get into the circuit, kind of feel it again, and uh, hopefully we're in a good spot then by Sunday afternoon. All right, best of luck to you as well. Pierre, can I start on Adrian as well? Is it true that he, he speaks a driver's language? Yeah, it is true. I mean, uh, yeah, it was very special six months working with him. Um, you know, very similar comments to Daniel. Obviously, he got the chance to work for for uh, much longer time, but he is one of the most successful car designer um, in our sport, and he's got a very unique way of approaching racing, approaching um, design. Because similar to Daniel, I walk in the factory and see him in front of his board drawing all sort of stuff which i could not even tell what was really going on on there but um ultimately it just seems to work uh when it, it gets to the track and um very humble person which i liked on a on a personal level i always had great talks with him and always accessible which uh which was very enjoyable um for the time we we had working together all right, thank you. And and what about Alpine then? It's been it's been a frustrating couple of races for you since the summer break. Um, what are you expecting here? Can it be better? You're, you're being tough. You're being <laughs> tough because we Zenvolt Zenvolt was actually really good for us. We, we were top of the the midfield. Um, last last race was uh, yeah it was definitely more um, disappointing and and more difficult in Monza, which. We knew historically doesn't really suit our our package, and objectively, Baku is another one where last year was was also very tough. So, um, yeah, we're coming with a humble approach. We have the similar car than than we had in Monza, and and we know on paper doesn't uh, look like an easy weekend. But you know, as Daniel said, it's one of these races where um, everything can happen. Um, can be thrown um in a, in a good spot at at any moment and um and hopefully we'll be able to capitalize any opportunities that um that uh, opens up here yeah. all right best of luck to you sorry for being harsh uh, right let's open this to the floor broadcasters first 
Uh, Harry Benjamin, Sky Sports F1. Question to Fernando, please. Um, Fernando, I just wanted to get your opinion on the McLaren team orders saga that's currently going on at the moment. Uh, you yourself know very well team orders being enforced and not being enforced can be quite, quite detrimental, losing out on titles. You also know Andrea Stella very well. Do you think McLaren should have introduced team orders and, and the backing of one driver over another sooner than they have apparently done so ahead of this weekend? No idea. Yeah. Not going to be drawn on that. All right. Uh, any more questions from broadcasters? Yes. Yes. No. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> um, Margot Lafitte, Canal Plus, uh, to Fernando and Daniel and Pierre is because we already have the answer in French. Um, talking about vision and visibility in an F1 car, we're doing a footage on that. Can you talk us through what you can see, what maybe can disturb you in a Formula One and the importance you give to your visual comfort in, the, in the, an F1 car? Fernando, let's start with you. Good question. I mean, <laughs> um, we, we see maybe less than the onboard camera shows sometimes. I think we are sitting on a lower position. Um, and yeah, we focus so much on on things quite far away that, you know, maybe it doesn't seem that obvious from, from outside. You know, the car, um, you know, is, is very fast, obviously, and, and you approach things in a very fast rate, so we are looking sometimes, you know, 300 meters, 400 meters away from us because in two tenths of the second we will be there. So um, that's that's the focus we have, and for that kind of um, yeah vision, I think we see enough from the car. Obviously, we don't see things that are close to us, even the Starbucks on the uh, on, on Sunday is difficult for us. Pit stops are a little bit of a guess as well because we don't have the exact um, point of where the front wing stands or the or the tires sometimes um, but yeah I, I think it's not very very important visibility in formula one as you know sometimes less you see faster you are okay. daniel how about you um yeah i think uh look fernando touched on a lot of the points it's yeah, um, I think it's always been tricky to, I think naturally the speeds we go, yes, we are always looking ahead and it's it's kind of the way you piece the lap together as well. You, By the time you get to one corner, you're already looking at the next and setting the cart for the next. So you don't necessarily need to see what's immediately in front of you, you know, two, five meters in front of you, but uh some situations it does it is uh yeah tricky and fernando touched on a very simple one but lining up in the grid box at the start we actually don't see obviously we see the grid box maybe when it's i don't know 10 meters in front of us five or so five ten meters but then when we get close it's just a judge um we're just trying to guess where it is so some like simple things are actually quite difficult um and it has become a bit more difficult i would say with the these uh this style car, so the bigger tires, um, the ride height, the car is a bit more flat. Therefore, it's it's kind of as if the nose is lifted. So then, yeah, with a ride height that, you know, kind of lifts us up from the rear and we're looking down more, this is now flatter. So, yeah, we lose probably another little bit in front of us. Um, but, yeah, it's, as I say, it's more the little things. I think at speed, either you don't, it doesn't matter too much or we're just used to it. But, yeah. Um, yeah, grid box, pit stops, some little things can be tricky. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I mean, the mirrors, we do the best with what we got, but naturally, naturally there are, you know, some, some blind spots at times. But then, yeah, obviously we use our judgment and spatial awareness the best way we can. Um, but yeah, I think it's, I think what would be, I think what's overwhelming probably to some is if, if they were to just sit in the car, I think they'll be like, how do you see? You know, because you're so used to seeing everything around you and you simply don't. So that in itself, I remember when I got went from go-karts to a formula car, that was the biggest difficulty was just trying to know, okay, whereabouts is the curb? I don't see the curb, so I have to figure out, you know, from a feeling. And yeah, it's that stuff is it takes a bit to get used to.